my mic wasn't on. So now it's 401, and we're going to call the meeting to order. Roll call. Eva Henry, Jan Pulaski, Bill Holland, Nancy Sharp, Elise Jones, Deb Gardner, David Beacom, Greg Stokes, Here. Tim Mock, Chrissy Fanganello, Anthony Graves, Robin Kniech, Here. Roger Partridge, Here. Gail Watson, Don Rozier, Libby Zabo, Bob Pfeiffer, John Marion. Here. <clears throat> Bob Roth, Here. Larry Vidham, David Spellman, Aaron Brockett, Here. Ann Justin, Lynn Baca, Rex Bell, George Teal, Doris Trular, Here. Laura Christman, Here. Richard Champion, Gail Christie, Rick Teeter, Here. Debbie Nasta, Steve Conklin, Here. Joe Jefferson, Steve Yates, Jeff Deacon, Mark Gruber, Daniel Deck, Present. Lisa Jones, Laura Brown, Lynette Kelsey, Henry Aragon, Scott Norquist, Storm Glor, Sarah Karis Graves, here. Ron Rakowski, <laughs> TJ Gordon, Mike Hillman, Brad Weasley, Stephanie Walton, Shakti, Jerry Bean, Phil Sunanik, present. Jackie Malay, Wynn Shaw, Joan Peck, Gabe Santos, here. Here. Was that Joan Peck? Yes, it was. Hi. Ashley Stolzman. Here. Connie Sullivan, Dan Greenberg, Colleen Whitlow, Joyce Palazuski, Deborah Jerome, Sean Foray, Chris Larson, <laughs> Kyle Mollica. Here. John Dyack. Here. Sally Daigle, Gary Howard, Rita Dozal. Here. Heidi Williams. Here. Herb Atchison. Here. Joyce J. Adam Zarin. Deborah Perkins Smith, Bill Van Meter. This is Lynette Elsie online too. Hi, Lynette. All right, before uh, public comment, we do have a couple of introductions to make. Uh, first of all, the new representative from Thornton is Mayor Heidi Williams. So this is her first meeting here. Thank you for coming. We have, although it's not his first meeting, the alternate from Broomfield, Greg Stokes, is here this evening, so thank you. And then, as I understand it, we have not received a letter, an official letter yet, which we do need to get, but the new representative from Arapahoe County is in the back, Jeff Baker, newly elected commissioner. To be sworn in on Monday. To be sworn in on Monday or sworn at. <laughs> so did I miss any uh, guests that are here or first timers? Seeing nobody. The next item is public comment. Uh, we do have uh, an opportunity for the public to make comment. We do ask that there be no public comment for which the board has already received a, uh, uh, a previous hearing. So is there anybody here that would like to address the board? Seeing nobody, we'll move on. Um, and I realize I forgot one thing, and that is the summary of the November 2nd board work session. Um, if there's any changes, revisions that need to be made to that, it's a, under attachment A. Seeing nobody clamoring for change, we'll have those approved as is. So for... One of the things I wanted to mention is that we have a much better turnout than I thought we would, given the weather. So congratulations for everybody weathering the storm. Um, I'm sure it has nothing to do with the topic that we're talking about this evening. So I wanted to uh, point out a few things to you real quick. Uh, first of all, there are basically three packets that were part of tonight's meeting. The first packet is your normal packet that we get every time that has the agenda and all that. And the majority of that, of course, this, this month is made up of the public comment process and the hearings that took place and uh, all, the, all that part of the uh, process that, would, that staff went through to make sure that we had ample opportunity for the public to get their input. 
This is really for information only this evening. Um, hopefully you had an opportunity to review it, see what the public comments were, but this is for information only. There were two links, and the two links that were part of the agenda, the first one was a red line copy of the previous that incorporated all of the, or most of the uh, public comments that were made. So you had a red line copy that kind of identified what those changes were, and then you had a clean copy that actually uh, had all those changes incorporated into it in a, in a clean set. So what we're going to do is we're going to spend our time on the red line copy so that everybody has an opportunity to go through and, uh, and see how the, the public comments were incorporated into this. Um, I want to point out a couple of things. First of all, the majority of the red line copy, probably about 90, 95% of the red line copy, has already gone forward to the board through the MVIC process. It's gone to the board and it's been approved by the board. Um, so I'm, I'm encouraging if, yeah, I mean, if people have comments that they want to make, that's fine, but I'm just encouraging everybody to keep in mind that this has already been approved. The majority of this has already been approved by the board. What we're looking at tonight is the incorporation of the public comment process in, in the overall uh, process of this. Um, the other thing that I want to mention is that we are we are going to try, again, unless somebody feels strongly about wanting to look at individual sentences, individual items, we'll do that. But generally speaking, we're going to go section by section, not item by item or line by line. If somebody wants to go into a little bit more detail, we certainly uh, will, will do that. But we want to go section by section. So we're going to start with the preamble. And then there are 14 sections, 14 objectives and outcomes. We are going to go 1 through 14 minus number 2. The reason we're skipping number 2 is because it is the one you might guess had the most comment. If you had the opportunity to read the backup, you saw that's where the majority of the comment was. So we're going to go 1 through 14 minus 2, and then we're going to come back and hit number 2. The objective is hopefully to get through the 13 items in a quick as manner as we can, still allowing for plenty of comment by people. And then we'll, we'll circle back to number two. Mr. Rex, did you have something? Well, I was just going to say, maybe as Brad is stepping up to the podium now, do we have some extra copies of the red line uh, for those that, that would wish to have one? So just raise your hand. We'll get them to you. Okay. So we're going to have a, a short presentation by Mr. Calvert. And uh, then we will dive into the discussion. Mr. Calvert. Thank you, and again, yes, thank you all for being here on a snowy af afternoon. And I know we have people on the on the phone. I can even see one. I don't know if she can, if Sally can see me. Oh, she can, maybe. <laughs> uh, I wasn't expecting that. Um, so uh, I am going to do my best to kind of orient you to not only kind of what's in the packet, uh, but also the discussion that will ha will happen this evening. And hopefully, by the time I finish doing this, I will not have con confused you further. Um, that, that is my goal, and, and that's what you should evaluate me on. Um, so uh, just to kind of give you an idea of what staff has been working on for probably maybe the last, let's call it six weeks, um, as the chair mentioned, uh, there was actually a public hearing um, on the draft Metrovision plan back in mid-November. Uh, you know, the, the months leading up to this, staff actually floated a calendar that suggested the board, board might actually consider action in December. But then when 26 sets of comments came in with 300 individual comments, it became clear that that turnaround wasn't going to work, and we need to be really sort of thoughtful um, about uh, the comments. So we spent a lot of time um, from that, let's call it mid-November through the end of the year, really compiling uh, those comments. And I'll talk a little bit about what the chair mentioned in terms of how they're pr uh, presented to you in, uh, in your packet. Um, we spent a lot of time uh, in December um, having coordination meetings with member governments, particularly those that submitted uh, comments. The slide says that we met with seven local governments. I think the number actually ended up being nine. Uh, we had a few that happened actually after the, the packet um, went out. So 
We really use those times. If you've ever been a person that has written a comment letter, you try to be concise and to the point, and sometimes it's hard to get context across. And so that's really, from our perspective, what we wanted to get out of those conversations is, is help us understand more kind of where you were coming from in terms of your comments so that we can obviously put forward uh, suggested revisions that, that, that take that context um, into account. Um, I don't know if your staff has briefed you on those. I found those meetings to be really helpful, uh, really instructive for particularly Doug and I as we try to go through and sort of sort through what types of revisions we would recommend to you um, this evening. Um, and then obviously we did recommend um, those revisions. So obviously you're going to spend uh, probably close to two hours, if not two hours, talking about this evening and about this this evening. Then ideally, if, you're, if we get far enough, um, this may be something that actually goes to the board uh, for action um, at the regular board meeting uh, on the 18th. So again, a little bit of orientation. Um, I think uh, the chair did a pretty good job of describing the packet as kind of reference material. Um, when we have the conversation, I will bring up the actual document and we will use that uh, as the way that you orient your conversation. But this is hopefully really good reference, reference material for you. Uh, the first attachment behind the memo are every set of comments that we received during that public comment period in what I would call its original format. If we got a letter, I just, we just put the letter in front of you. Um, most of those you actually saw as hard copies back in November, but we just put them in front of you uh, again. Um, attachment two is a summary of the five um, sets of public testimony that we received at that public hearing back in November. Um, each of those folks that uh, provided uh, oral testimony also submitted uh, written comments as well. So there, there's, you'll have coverage uh, two ways um, from those set of commenters. And then the other thing that we did, is, as was mentioned in attachment three, we did our best to try to organize the comments kind of by topic rather than you having to sit down and read 26 individual sets of comments and try to remember what commenter A said about urban centers versus commenter G. Uh, we tried to sort of lay those out uh, by topics. I think we ended up with maybe 15 sets of topics that just we heard consistently um, through the comment um, period. So we've tried to organize uh, those comments that way. And that's what's in attachment three, including a very high level sort of staff response to those comments. Um, as we mentioned in December, you know, it wasn't our goal to, to give you line by line, comment by comment staff responses, just high level staff response to maybe set some context in terms of sort of our feedback um, on the comments. And then attachment four, which is also noted um, in the memo, we had a few um, uh, correspondences um, after the public comment period that came in um, from members that we thought it was important uh, to put in front of you uh, this evening as well. So that's really what that includes. I think there's a letter from Westminster, a letter from Douglas County, as well as some comments that came in from Douglas County um, after the comment period. And as the chair mentioned, uh, the packet, you know, we, we'd already read a pretty um, voluminous packet, so we linked both a red line and a, and a clean version um, of those, um, those revisions, revisions, which again are staff suggestions based on um, public comment that we received as well as uh, the feedback we received when we met individually uh, with several communities. So a little bit about kind of what our approach was in terms of how we take, you know, 300 plus sets of comments and, and decide what to put in front of you in terms of um, revisions. You know, I can't say that we tried to accommodate every single comment. Um, that wasn't uh, really something um, that we tried to do, mostly because the feedback that we received from the board in December was, was very specific, be judicious about the comments that we would come back to you and suggest uh, merit uh, a revision. Um, there are many people around this table that spent a lot of time around this table coming up with the words that you felt um, most strongly about. And so we tried to be very um, uh, aware and cognizant of this was your work. And so we wanted to make sure um, and, and be sensitive to that. And so the way that we generally approach this and sort of leaning back on that uh, strategic planning model that you followed as you developed um, the draft plan. Really the strategic initiatives, that was kind of our lowest bar in terms of making uh, potential uh, revision and putting it in front of you. Um, oftentimes these came up, let's, call the, let's talk about those local coordination meetings. These came up in those meetings as things that our members, your staff and your communities are already working on. We might as well reflect it as, as an initiative. Like, so we heard a lot of that and we consider that a pretty um, low bar in terms of suggesting a change and then the highest bar uh, was to those overarching uh, themes and outcomes. Um, the memo does suggest uh, a few places where outcome language, um, either the, the, the wording itself or the narrative, uh, were revised. And I can walk you through those if, that, if that's helpful, but that was kind of our highest bar uh, in terms of staff ultimately um, suge suggesting a change really to kind of spark um, tonight's uh, conversation. 
Um, so as uh, this is sort of a repeat of uh, what the chair mentioned, obviously we welcome discussion on any proposed revision or even something that was in there that just in a, in a closer second read maybe caught your eye that didn't catch your eye before. I'll let the group govern itself in terms of um, items uh, such as that. Um, and then as the chair noted, I think given the, 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 the level of change that staff is at least bringing forward for this group to, to start a conversation around, um, on outcome two, it might make sense to sort of hold that to the end and hopefully you guys can move uh, pretty quickly through everything else and then we can reserve a fair amount of time uh, for that conversation and staff, we're, we're welcome to kind of share our perspective um, on those changes as well when we, when we get to that. Um, I did want to quickly sort of note um, a little bit about uh, a change to a proposed measure. Um, so without getting into, into a ton of detail about the changes um, that were proposed in outcome two, which is related to uh, the region's urban growth boundary area program, uh, you know, really our, our basic intent as staff in making the changes that we made were to be consistent with the intent of what that program is trying to accomplish, sort of a, a regional dialogue and conversation about growth that leads to an orderly compact expansion of our urban footprint, right? That's what we're trying to accomplish um, through that outcome. Um, the UGB has been a program that's been associated with that, um, uh, and we actually had a measure that was specifically tied to that UGB program, and one of the things that we did um, in the wordings, wording or language that we put in front of you was to is to maximize sort of the focus on the intent and minimize sort of the focus on the initiative uh, because I think that's still a conversation to come um, at the board level in terms of what the mechanics of that program uh, looks like. So that's a long-winded way of also saying we actually had a measure tied specifically uh, to UGB and if, and if we sort of dial back a little bit specific references to the program and the initiative, it tended to um, make sense to actually think about uh, the measure uh, as well because there was a measure related to um, UGB. And I'll talk a little bit about what we're suggesting. What we're suggesting is something called population weighted density um, in the region, um, which is I know hard to explain in like three slides and even in the couple minutes I'll spend here, maybe I won't nail it, but we can, we can spend some time with it if, if it helps. Um, I think everybody kind of understands what density is, right? Number of people or, or households in a, in a space. Um, and so what we are suggesting is rather than standard density, uh, we were talking about uh, population weighted density, and I'll talk a little bit about kind of how we um, ended up here. Um, what's really important, um, and in some ways this is an improvement from the previous measure, even sort of absent or uh, the conversation about UGB, um, we, can, we can live with a cut, with rather than a custom geography, we can live with a standard geography that, that doesn't change over time, right? The region's boundary historically does not change over time versus the UGB um, boundary could change every day. Like if, if, a, new, if a community is committing um, UGB to a place that had not previously, you have both a numerator and a denominator changing, which from a measurement standpoint obviously can, can throw a lot of um, variables um, into play. Um, we think that the population weighted density is, is a really good, good model uh, for a measure for a couple of reasons. Um, you know, we think of it as, as it's a regional figure, but it builds on sort of smaller building blocks. So it builds on what's happening at the census tract level, right? So sort of the world that you live and work in and can relate to, um, it's a little bit easier um, to understand. Um, the other thing that we really um, think that is good about it is that Typically, this, a measure associated with increasing density maybe gives the impression that density should be raised everywhere, um, which is really not what MetroVision has, has, has really put out there for, for many, many years. It really talks about density in the places that want density um, and, and maybe less density in the places that are looking to preserve those amenities that are associated with, with, with less development. Um, and so the weighted density um, figure um, allows us uh, to do that and to sort of emphasize um, density um, in places where, again, there are amenities in place, there's infrastructure, and there are uh, communities looking to increase density um, in those sorts of places. Um, and the other thing that's actually interesting, um, this last bullet, uh, that I think is maybe, I would call it a nice to have, I wouldn't necessarily consider it something as part of your conversation, but just something that we landed on is it actually allows for uh, comparisons to other regions um, to be a little bit easier and a little bit um, more easy to understand. I know we've got. I apologize for interrupting, but I would uh, find it very helpful if you just explain how you measure this, because I didn't get that from your description. Sure. So, um, Andy, do you want to take? You would probably nail it on the first try, rather than me. I will 
knowing that it's best to re rely on your technical experts, I'm going to turn it over to Andy Taylor, who's a senior planner um, on our staff, who can, again, probably get it in, in 30 words um, right the first time. So I'll, I'll let Andy cover that. So the, the density is calculated at each census tract, which is kind of like a neighborhood scale, and that's then aggregated, averaged across the region, but um, it's weighted by population in each of those census tracts. So that's the average isn't just a straight average, it's, it's actually weighted. So census tracts that have more population carry more weight in that calculation. Does that, does that help answer it? It's, it's um, the, the, the short description I have is still pretty technical, which is it's a population weighted average of the density of each census tract in the region. And was the alternative the total people divided by the total area? So that, and the, the, the alternative that was previously there, the total area was this UGBA uh, uh, custom geography. Okay, I have two, three other people in the queue. So first, Director Shakti. Um, what is the point of, I'm not saying it's good or bad, I just don't understand. What does weighting it do? What is the point of that as opposed to just measuring the density? So it's getting uh, closer to um, uh, represent the, the density of the place where the average person actually lives. It's sometimes also called uh, perceived density. Um, so instead of measuring the amount of land around someone, it, it's measuring um, uh, closer to the number of people around the average, living around the average person. Um, so, so it's, it's um, that. So I'll, I'll describe it this way. Um, if you simply look at just standard dens a density calculation, so let's, let's pres presume the denominator is the regional area and the numerator is number of people in the region, right? Under a standard way of thinking about density, you add one single person to the region, your density has just increased. Under a weighted density calculation, that person that's added in a place that is more populated, that maybe has transit service, has access to amenities, actually moves the needle in a positive direction versus that person that is on the very farthest fringe of the, of the region would actually move the weight of density in the, in the opposite direction. You would actually get a lower amount because you would be adding a person to a lower um, density um, area. Okay, thanks. It's it just, I mean, this the Census Bureau is sort of going to this, to, to, to get to a place where Andy talked about it. It's that perceived density, right? Rather than just a number, just like, is this place um, that is actually, I perceive as dense. Like, so for instance, sort of it's long been thought of if you actually run the numbers through a standard density calculation that Los Angeles is denser than New York, where that's not the perception that you have when you're in those two, two places, right? When you actually apply a weighted density calculation, New York sort of flies by Los Angeles um, pretty substantially. And so to give you an idea, when we looked at, um, the census looked at I think 350 urban areas in a standard density calculation, uh, the Denver region ranks like in the 120s, like our peers in that case are Muncie, Indi Muncie Indiana, nothing against Muncie, but like a place that doesn't necessarily feel like the Denver region. And, and the weighted um, side of things, we're more like in the Seattle um, realm, which really feels more like what we are as a region. And particularly for us, the weighted density calculation, calculation makes a lot of sense because we have so much land area that simply can't be developed. Like it's permanently protected um, as, as conservation, conservation area or open space. Like anything that looks at a raw um, sort of land figure probably isn't the best um, for our region. Director Christman. Bye. To compare ourselves with other region peers or other national Peers, as you said, Seattle versus Muncie. Is this weighting uh, universal, or is this something we came up and then to compare ourselves with Seattle, we have to take their data and input the same kind of weighting? Or is, is this now becoming the universal weighted calculation? Yeah, it, it, the, the, the method that you would use is universal. Okay. What changes is obviously the, the place, um, and then um, the census tracts, the sort of individual smaller geographies, um, those obviously um, come into play as well. But it's, like I said, the, the census was able to do uh, this calculation for all 350 major metro areas in the region and they, in the country, and they apply the same methodology and approach um, in each case, which, again, makes that, that comparison a little simpler. Thank you. Director Holen. Uh, with respect to this new calculus, um, how will uh, future growth or future potential opportunities 
in growth be impacted by this new calculus? How about I will walk you through um, the last slide, which is actually sort of an observation of what has happened in the past decade and a half, and that might help sort of answer that. So if it's cool with you, I'll do it that way, and then we'll revisit uh, the question if you didn't really feel like this, this helped. Um, so one of the things that we did um, throughout the process when the board was having conversations about potential measures is like, just take stock of kind of where we are um, uh, today um, and really kind of maybe looking back to see um, uh, where, where we've been and then obviously trying to think going forward um, is that target, uh, which in this case we opted as staff just to keep the 25% increase target that was associated with the previous measurement and, and applied it here as well. So I hope this isn't too confusing. But so anytime you measure a trend, obviously the year that you pick for the first and the last year and all the, thing, all the things that are observed in between changes what that trend line looks like, right? So um, if you look at our region and apply this sort of standard way of, of doing this calculation uh, between 2000 and 2009, we actually saw a decrease in weighted population density. Um, as I think people can recognize that was um, probably a period where we were actually growing maybe more on the, the edges of the region than we may have been growing um, on, the, on the inside of the region. When I say inside, that means existing denser areas. It doesn't just mean the CBD. We have dense uh, census tracts all, all around um, the region. Fast forward from 2009 to 2014 when we saw, I mean, almost unprecedented um, uh, development of, of higher density development in, in existing higher density communities you saw a 10% overall increase um, in, that, in that weighted density just in uh, really that, that five-year uh, five period. Uh, so really, I mean, Andy and I were talking about that a little bit this morning. There's actually a fair amount of variability here almost based on real estate cycle. When you have a cycle that really is investing in and investing in places that maybe it's more an infill-oriented um, uh, period of time, uh, you will probably see pretty substantial increases in, in weighted uh, population density. You go to a different real estate cycle that maybe is about greenfield development. Um, uh, you might see something that either stagnates and doesn't move us um, towards that increase or, and you know, as we observe between 2000 and 2009, um, actually a, de a decrease in that, in that weighted density. Whereas between 2000 and 2009, a standard density calculation as a region, we would have simply been, we would have become denser. We were adding more people, land area was staying the same, we were becoming denser, even though the perception of how dense we were as a region was actually um, changing in maybe the, a different direction. Did that help, Director Holland? Okay. Director Sardanic. Yeah, I, just in, in trying to uh, uh, interpret uh, the change in the, in the measure that's here, uh, recognizing the, the purpose of UGB is to be in some position, at least the principle is to say, hey, we're part of the West, we want to preserve some of our sense of space, um, and so there, therefore some of the objective is to put people where there's already people, and uh, therefore increasing the, the density for where there already are people. Uh, does the measure reflect that part of the UGB intent? Yeah, and that, that, that's a good, good question. I mean, that was another thing that uh, appealed to staff on this is, um, in general, like when I'm asked like the 30-second sort of pitch of what um, this region's sort of growth framework is, it's what you just said, and then it's sort of the corollary of um, identifying places in the region that actually would accept additional intense development because it makes sense based on their local priorities, right? Um, that you actually want to grow by transit stations. Let, let, let's take that as an example. This measure does the best of balancing that, of recognizing that it will, it will point us in a, in a direction and illustrate that we are actually accomplishing both things, that we are putting people where they, where they already are and therefore potentially um, seeing less development in places um, that are maybe outside uh, the UGB, to, to follow your example. Yep. All right, so before we dive in, a couple of housekeeping items. Um, I heard several people join on the phone. So if you joined in during Mr. Calvert's presentation, if you could identify yourself, please. Jackie Malay. Yeah, oh. Win Winshaw. Joe Jefferson, also here online. Scott Norquist. Who was that? Scott Norquist. Got 
Is that everybody? And also note uh, Anthony Graves. Anthony right. Graves showed up. Yep. And and I didn't see. Jeff Deacon. You know what? I didn't phrase that very well, Mr. Graves. I apologize. <laughs> it's about time. No. <laughs> um, okay. Bob and Sally. Sally Daigle. Yep. Okay. Yes. And what about Bob, who's been showing us no? I appreciate that. All right, so a couple of other things I wanted to mention real quick. Um, typically, as you know, we have a 6 o'clock hard stop to this meeting because we have a committee meeting afterwards. Uh, I'm hoping that we can get through this. As Mr. Calvert mentioned, we'd like to bring this to the board at the next board meeting. That's probably aspirational, but we'll see. Um, but what a, if, if, we're, if we are getting close and it looks like we're going to run over but still make it to the finish line tonight, we're not going to have a hard stop at 6, just so you know. I'll kind of judge where we're at. The other thing is I did want to, uh, and I should have done this before, I did want to comment on the staff efforts, Dr. Cog's staff efforts on this, because as you can imagine when you read through the, all the comments, um, obviously there were a lot of conflicting comments, so they needed to go through and kind of filter through what made sense, uh, what maybe some things we've already talked about and discussed, and kind of get those conflicts uh, in addition to the 10 meetings that they had with different municipalities. So I wanted to comment on, on Dr. Cog's staff efforts on that. So we're going to dive in. So the first area that we're going to talk about is from the first page that starts out about, about Dr. Cog through outcome number one, which is about 14 pages back after that. So going section by section, like we mentioned, this preamble of the first everything before outcome one, is there anything that anybody would like to talk about? Director Kanich. Thanks. We don't need to talk about it now, but I just want to flag that there are summaries in this section of later sections. And that so to sense. the extent we have any discussion about those, I just want to make sure that we all have the same understanding that the summary would, of course, be then connected. It'll carry forward. When we get to the topic. Is, yeah. is that so we don't need to mess with the summaries. That makes sense. Okay, thanks. Anybody else? See nobody, we will go to outcome one on page 12. And I'll just mean I have the red line version up. If someone thinks I should be using the clean copy, tell me. Otherwise, I'm going to roll with this. <laughs> Not seeing anybody, and I, I think the red line version is the one that we should be looking at so we can understand the, the changes. So I'm not seeing anybody uh, jumping up and down for outcome one. As mentioned, we're going to skip outcome two for right now and go to outcome three, connected urban centers and multimodal corridors. Comments, suggestions? conversation and I would just so, add if anyone has questions about kind of where staff came from in terms of making this revision or revisions including kind of conversations that we had uh, with your staff I'm happy to fill in that context if you think it's helpful director Shakti okay anybody on three see nobody we will move on to outcome four starting on page 28 director Shakti so page 30, um, we've crossed off develop supporting infrastructure and local regulations, policies, and ordinances regarding alternative fuels, fleet conversions, environmental preservation, and related topics. Um, this is voluntary options available for lo local organizations. Uh, that was just that appeared twice. That appeared once in this section and once in kind of let's call it the environmental section. And we had a few commenters suggest it probably made more sense to, to be there if it was only going to be one place. And so that's, um, and someone, we will, I will double check that as I'm scrolling through, but that's why that change was made. It was just a deletion here, but it remained um, in, in a different location. Just a quick request from the board, or from the chair, is, is on pages where there's lots of changes, if you could kind of identify where, you, where you're at so I can keep up. Director Williams. 
so I'm new and I'm looking at my staff notes, so I apologize when I don't have a clue what I'm saying. Um, on uh, the red line under collaboration, it says coordinate with RTD to improve local service, including service biops for increased frequency and coverage. Well, we don't like uh, the word service biops, and so if that, those words were removed, then we would um, support that language. I, I'm sorry, what page were you on? 29. 29, thank mm -hmm. you. It's on the right under collaboration, okay. kind of third bullet point down. So I apologize. Can you repeat? So the service buy-ups is the part that... The service buy-ups are the, the concerning words for us um, because if it appears in this document, it'll also be in the um, MetroVision Regional Transportation Plan. And it says RTD could use this to only expand service in Thornton if we are willing to pay for it. So we, I mean, we, we don't like the words buy-up and so we would support it if those words were removed. Director Jones. Oh, go ahead. I guess I'll speak Direct, instead. Director Brockett. Thank you. Um, well, well, we certainly prefer for RTD to fund the service themselves. Uh, service biops are an important tool that we use in the city of Boulder and also Boulder County to improve service where RTD is unwilling to. So I think it's, it's important to keep this in our, our toolkit so that we do have that option. And it, I guess for me, like the staff is saying, and I agree with this, over half the population of Thornton is not served by RTD. So it, the, the, that isn't a great term for us because we're very different, obviously, than a boulder would be. So that's why we don't get the words. Director Jones. Uh, you know, point well taken. I think we all uh, probably share a universal desire for more funding for transit op opportunities, including those that lie outside RTD. Um, but because this is optional and because it, it's, it, it's highlighted as one tool out of many, it's not saying it has to be one. Um, I guess I would, and because some jurisdictions do use it, and it's good to remind RTD that we are allowed to do this, I, I would weigh in on keeping it in. Um, Although I, I'm happy to support enhanced language about seeking additional funding and opportunities for transit outside of RTD if there are other places to insert that. Other comments on that? Director Cernanek. Just one, uh, particularly when we're dealing with the senior population, there are places where other funding is used for transportation options. Uh, that don't include RTD or are in conjunction with RTD. Um, I, uh, uh, Director Williams' comment uh, uh, would say uh, other language would be appropriate here other than biops because it's not necessarily the community. Sometimes it's uh, um, outside of uh, any kind of municipality. Uh, so you, we might want to look at um, alternative approaches of some sort uh, or uh, additional funding sources uh, that can be done for transit. Director Kanich. I was, um, I don't know if this mic is working. Is it yes. working? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I, potentially a way to emphasize the RTD funding, and, and maybe we could change the wording, but can, can coordinate with public transit providers to improve regionally funded transit service or lo regionally funded local service, comma, maintaining the right to buy out for increased frequency and coverage as to or, or, you know, so that they're clearly two different things. So I think that's maybe a way to emphasize that this is about you, you know, the region funding some, but don't take away anyone's right to buy more. Does that work? That could work, yeah. Okay, so it sounds like we have, uh, for Director Williams' concern, we have a an option that works. Is everybody good with that option? Very good. Can, can I also Is just clarify when something like that? I don't need to capture tonight. We have a recording. I've got the word. Y'all are is y'all head nodded with, with each other. We're good. Okay. Yes. Cool. Thanks. Very good. Other items on uh, regional ob objective four. Director Christman. Uh, not the box, but Mike. Oh, sorry. Page 30. 
um, hierarchy, hierarchical. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Thank you. You're the second person to catch that, so <laughs> thank you for that. That was already on our list. Oh, okay. Don't make me say that word. It's very difficult to say. So. <laughs> okay. Just one more question. Is hierarchical within the context of uh, a biking network a term of art? Because I'm not sure what hierarchical network is. Director, basically it means, this is Jacob Rieger for our okay. transportation staff, basically it means um, within the context of a bicycle network, trying to have some differentiation of, you know, a major regional trail like the High Line or the South Platte, you know, versus um, a Sharrow on a street. You know, so it is, you know, the sort of level of, of facility provided, you know, volume, regional importance, whatever metric you want to look at, but it is trying to make those distinctions on the bicycle network, and that's a big part of what our upcoming active transportation plan so will it do. Is, it is a term of art yeah. within the community. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I would. Go ahead. Yeah, Ms. Ms. May, Ms. I, I, I would. I would suggest that it's similar to like you know the the classification changes uh, differences in our roadway network, interstates versus local mm -hmm. roads, and everything in between. It's kind of that kind of concept. Okay. Yeah, they're not computational. It is qualitative, but. All right, seeing nothing else on four, we're gonna move on to outcome five, which starts on page 32. Not seeing anybody raising their hand. I'm assuming that this is good to go, and we will move on to outcome six, starting on page 38. Comments or questions? Director Williams. I have one, but I'm not quite ready to talk about it yet. I need to still understand what they're trying to tell me here. So okay. can we maybe come back to it? Sure. <sighs> Was there somebody on the phone that had something? Okay, we're going to come back to six in just a moment. And we're going to look at outcome seven, which starts on page 41. Outcome seven, comments or questions? Seeing nobody? Outcome eight, starting on page 45. Comments or questions? Again, see nobody. Moving on to outcome number nine, starting on page 48. Okay. Comments or questions on outcome nine? Seeing nobody will revisit outcome six, and Director Williams has indicated that they are good with it, so we will uh, have no further comment on six unless there's somebody that has something to add. Okay. On to outcome 10, starting on page 54. Seeing nobody, we will move on to outcome 11, starting on page 58. Comments or questions? Seeing nobody, we will move on to outcome 12. Outcome 12 starts on page 61. Seeing no raised hands, we will move on to outcome 13, starting on page 68. Okay. 
No raised hands on that, so we'll go to outcome 14, starting on page 71. No comments or questions on 14. After 14, there are a few appendices. Anything on those that anybody wants to discuss? All right. As most of you know, I periodically do time checks. So we're at 446. We hope to get through 13 out of 14 in one hour. We beat it. So congratulations. Uh, okay. Director Cernanek. And uh, Brad, I just want to um, bring up one item is, uh, and I'm going back to page five. So uh, apologies to the facilitator on this, but I wanted to make sure we went through the other sections. What one uh, demerit. <laughs> I'm glad it's only one. Um, in this, we also had subcommittees of the board uh, that went through and involved uh, some additional stakeholders, uh, particularly when it came to areas of economic development and housing. And those are not included here, but we're very dependent upon those for execution of the plan. Um, and I'm wondering, it, it didn't seem as I went through this, uh, and our staff went through it, that that part was included to recognize um, the, the chambers, uh, the economic development uh, organizations across the region, and the housing organizations as well. And those are, those are pretty important stakeholders and partners in this. And I know I've mentioned earlier about making sure that they're on board because the plan is only good as good as the whole team is. Uh, and maybe you can comment on that and whether we should include that uh, in this stakeholder section. Mr. Calvert. Sure. I, I, I'm on the, the, lat, the latter point. I, I'm certainly willing, and frankly, I think it's probably a good add um, to talk about that specific outreach. I know for the folks that were involved, um, for those that don't, that weren't here now three years ago, however long it was, long ago it was, um, the last few I'll, outcomes I'll that, that you just talked about. Um, uh, included some some the issues of housing and also the issues of economic vitality, uh, which which in reality had not been, uh, I would I would say kind of omnipresent had not been sort of front and center in Metro Vision in the past, uh, but through the very early stakeholder engagement efforts, it was suggested that those issues are really important. Um, I was I, I mean I can't tell you how many meetings I have in the, and over a course of a week where the issue of housing comes up right I mean it's, if you've lived in this region and experienced either from a personal level or trying to keep workforce or, or whatever like you can't um, uh, escape it um, but because those issues weren't necessarily again front and center in the previous version of the plan uh, you know we wanted to vet the idea of this plan more broadly talking about those issues uh, with the board um, and so I want to say that was now 2014 um, there were two ad hoc committees that were formed um, one to look at the housing issue and one to look at the economic vitality issue and particularly on the economic vitality side um, that group leaned on sort of our core set of economic development partners to just make sure as, 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 as the, the board was thinking through kind of the, that aspirational vision um, of the region, which is about sort of growing the economy and growing prosperity and making sure people have access to that opportunity that actually that, that, that's in line with something that they would support. And I think you got feedback at the time um, that it was. Um, you know, I know uh, Director Sinanek mentioned, um, maybe this was the December board meeting, that we should probably re-engage uh, those folks, um, and I agree with that, but I also will tell you I probably fell short um, on that. Uh, December was scramble mode to get in front of um, our member governments, um, and but oftentimes when we met with staff, we at least oftentimes had kind of a, the, the economic development person from that jurisdiction in the room, which obviously isn't necessarily the same as the full set um, of economic development partners. Um, but we did have a few folks on the on the housing side um, submit comments largely in support um, of where where the draft ended up. Um, but but frankly, that that reengagement will likely happen after the plan is considered uh, by the board, um, unless you, you know, obviously you, you have the authority to tell me we're not doing anything until um, we've, we, we've circled back uh, with those groups. But, but in reality, I spent more time focusing on the comments that came in the door and reconciling those, and then again, having 
uh, conversations with our members than we really did with um, other partners and stakeholders. And, and recognizing that uh, the re-engagement process is going to be ongoing, um, I'll try and futz for you on that one, um, but wouldn't it be good to mention uh, those stakeholders and that, that aspect of our subcommittee process that unlike prior Metro Vision plans, uh, this did uh, take those things into, a, into context because they realized they are important for the execution of the plan. Mr. X. Thank you very much. Yeah, I mean, if, back to the, to the whole idea of recognizing those, the valuable work those two, two ad hoc committees did, um, there's probably two opportunities within that call out box to do that is either under the advisory committee, although we don't mention the housing and economic vitality until the last, um, the last paragraph of, of, uh, and within Sustainable Communities Initiative. Yeah, Maybe right there we just recognize the work that those two ad hoc committees Yeah, but did. it's more than the SCI activity right, that we went to. So burying right. it there does not do it justice. Right. In my opinion. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's that opportunity and there's also an opportunity what is on what is the bottom of page four that talks about what's different about today's MetroVision where we highlight a little bit about sort of the introduction of maybe, let's call them new topics for lack of a better term. Uh, we could probably wait and emphasize that the introduction of two new topics also involved um, significant conversations with key partners that, that are maybe closer to that world um, than we have tra traditionally um, uh, spent time. And that, and that um, that was a key piece to making sure that we were finding the right fit from this sort of aspirational vision um, uh, piece. That's it. Does that help? Uh, as, as long as something's included. Thank you. Now, I, th I think that's important. And also recognize, you know, the work in collaboration with the board and those, those interest groups. I think it's worth mentioning for sure. Because after all, it was an extra meeting for you all, <laughs> monthly. All right, we are going to go to outcome number two. Uh, certainly expect that we're going to have good discussion on this. What I would ask, I mentioned this before, but what I would ask is since there are a lot of changes and there's probably going to be a lot of conversation, if you could help me by identifying where you are in, your, uh, in the narrative so I can follow with you, that'd be great. And we're going to start with Director Stolzman. Thank you. I'll just make a general comment. Um, I, I feel like the changes dance around our process for urban growth boundary, and I think they actually make it more confusing. So a lot of times you talk about a process, or there is a process, or there will be a process, and it just seems like if we would just name it, and then we can always change the process. That's the path we're, we're going down to discuss what the process will be and what we want the process to look like. But I find it that the revision seems more confusing to me than it was originally. Director Kanich. Thanks. Um, I want to just start with a little context, and then I'm going to start with outcome two at the top of 15, the, the big text. Um, I know we have a bunch of folks who've kind of newly joined the board, and so one of the things we did probably two years ago now is a exercise called scenario planning, where the staff put various types of growth patterns into a computer system and then said, how long do people spend in traffic? Um, how much congestion is there? How many, um, how, how much does infrastructure cost? And, and we learned a lot about the value of compact growth as a region, right? This is not that every block has to have the same density, but just regionally, if you have more compact growth versus less. And I think that that is a really, for me, has been a powerful piece of data as we've thought about these different sections of the agreement, you know, or of the of the plan. And so for me, that's what this section was about, is about the idea that having some focus is good for the region because of resources and because of the quality of life of our residents, right? So compact growth results in many hours fewer average of congestion compared to the alternative. So um, and it doesn't designate, you know, the specific um, type of development any one community needs. It just talks about the overall goal and value. So, so I, um, and I know from, from the conversations we've had at this table why the UGB and UGA as a specific tool for that has become difficult. And, um, and so I, I think that these were tough negotiations over these language sections the first time around. 
I think many folks felt really strongly that we had to stand by the UGB and the UGA, and clearly, you know, we still have a number of communities and commenters who, who wanted us not to be referring to that. So I um, personally, for the, you know, and, and consulting with Denver and, and talking about the values that, you know, our community has, I, I think it's okay to take out a reference to UGB and UGA. I think that um, it is a program, it's not a value, it's not a big picture principle, and so I think that's a big step because I think it's still important for us to have something like the UGBA and A, and I know we're going to make some changes to it, so it makes me nervous and uncomfortable to take out a reference to it. I'm just going to be really honest because it makes me nervous that we'll go through that process and maybe not have it anymore, even with fixing a lot of the things we want to fix, right? Annexation questions and things like that. I think those things are fixable. So I'd rather keep the language in, but I am willing to take it out. What I would like to propose, though, is I think some of the language that replaced it kind of missed the, the point of the value. So I, I want to just propose a few words to add, and there's a couple places these get added just to be consistent. So I'm going to start with this one, and we can debate it there, but just know that there's like three or four places it would have to go to just to be consistent. But right now, the sentence reads, through a coordinated effort between Dr. Cog and local communities, new urban development occurs in an orderly and compact pattern. My proposal is to add the words, within regionally designated growth areas. So this implies that there's agreement. Only if Dr. Cog and local communities agree, because that's at the beginning of the sentence, could you have a designated area. If there is no agreement, there would be no designated area. But if there is agreement, between Dr. Cog and local communities on designated areas, that's where we should be focusing. Doesn't say what those are called, um, doesn't say how much of them there are, doesn't talk about policy, it just says, hey, where these two parties agree, that's where we should focus. So, so the words I'm talking about adding, and maybe it is helpful if you put them up there, within regionally designated growth areas. So that's the concept, um, and, and like I mentioned, I can, I'll, I can outline, I think, the pages where you'd want to make it consistent. There's, I think, four other places where this same language kind of appears, but we can talk about it from this point. And then there's one other language change I want to talk about separate, but this is the, this is the main one. So before I recognize other people, uh, I would welcome comments on that particular proposed change. Director Cernanek. Um, it, it's uh, in the spirit of high level first uh, in this, but um, it, one is um, trending away from using the urban growth boundary UGB slash A terminology to make it less of a lightning rod. I absolutely agree with that. Um, what I don't see in this is why. And starting with the why, um, We've yet to put together what specifics we might have on a program going forward um, and how that would work. But, um, you know, you go back to um, wherever it was, 1987 or so when it, when it came about, it was basically we, what we wanted to do is not sprawl our way uh, in accommodating additional people uh, because we wanted to protect some of our sense of being Western and to preserve some of that. Uh, I miss that in, when I read through the red line version uh, and when I read through the not red line version, it's lost entirely to say why we're doing it other than it's a growth tool, uh, which is an important piece. But why the hell are we doing this? Uh, because we think it's important and as uh, Director Nietzsche has, has, has mentioned, um, it's, it's for a quality of life for the region uh, that we want to have this. And uh, those, are, those are important concepts to have. So as we go through uh, discussing the specifics of any program, uh, we ought to know why we're taking this on. And I would like to see that language or language to that effect. I don't have specific words to suggest. I will leave that to folks that are more eloquent than I am. So uh, real quick, we have, I have three in the queue. Uh, Director Shakti, Holen, and Jones, and I will first ask, and uh, Chrisman, I will first ask uh, again, I want to keep on this topic before we go to a new topic, so I'll just ask, is Director Shakti, is it on the same topic or is it a new topic? 
Okay. Uh, Director Holan. My comment is uh, basically in in this general issue, uh, we submitted a letter uh, to the to the uh, uh, executives uh, at uh, Dr. Cog, and it was not acknowledged in the uh, section, as I can see. Yeah. So I'd like to make sure that that gets included in the uh, in the final draft. It, it was in the backup. Director Jones, same topic. Yes. Thank you. So um, <clears throat> thank you, Director Kanich, for bringing this up. Um, I would put a finer point even on the why and the regional s the scenario planning that, that underlies the whole idea behind a compact regional footprint, which is what we're talking about. Every single metric that we measured, not just qu quality of life, if you parse it out, um, Air quality, water uh, quantity, traffic, um, funding for infrastructure, every single metric that we measured is better if the region has a compact fo uh, pa growth pattern and that we don't, for lack of a better term, sprawl without uh, an orderly, thoughtful process. This is one of, I think, the heart and soul concepts of Metro Vision, and it has been from the very get-go. And I would say it's something that um, my neck of the woods um, thinks is one of the most important pieces. So, um, and, and when we discussed this earlier, I don't know, was it 18 months ago? Each word was, was discussed and negotiated very carefully. And I think most folks around this table agreed with the spirit. Of course, we don't want to sprawl. Of course, we want the benefits of a compact form. And we noodled around on the details, but I think the spirit everybody agreed with. So I will just preface my comments to say it is hard then to go back and revisit something so important. And um, it's not something to be done lightly. I appreciate the spirit of tr trying to get this across the finish line, and some jurisdictions have issues with the details of how the UGBA program is currently being implemented. We're going to work on those, but so I'm willing to consider moving away from specifically talking about UGBA in this and talk about the intent. I do feel we've the edits have gone too far and have lost some of that. And one of the areas where I think it's gone too far is not talking about a regional designation. So I find myself in, in great support of where Director Kanich is going to make sure that that gets put back in so we don't lose sight of all of the great regional benefits we're trying to capture through this important outcome. Thank you. Dir Director Christman. This goes to this language and, and essentially what Elise is saying. If, since I don't know where all the other changes are, right now I think the language you've added in fact conflicts with that first paragraph because it's, it in essence says there is going to be regionally designated growth areas and then the next sentence just talks about a process to help the region manage. So that isn't the same as a regionally designated growth area. So if you are going to have that in there, then you need to do exactly what Elise is saying, is create the process in here to create growth areas that are regionally designated where, and it appears, is the only place that development will occur, as this is written. I don't know that that's the intent. But by putting that in, that's what you've said. Director Kanich. Yeah, I guess my response would be that this is more like the Constitution. It doesn't implement anything on its own. It needs a statute. It needs an ordinance to do that. And so um, you could look at any page in this document, and there are values and aspirational goals that require something else to make them effective. And, and in some ways, you know, when I was debating this section, you know, one of the staff members said to me, well, you know, this was an odd duck. We didn't have the names of programs in other sections. 
we had the values and the goals. So this one was a little odd, and that helped a little bit to get me there in, in terms of thinking about this differently. So, so I would just say that the whole document makes reference to things that are not policy, and in part that's in, well, it's not in part, it is intentional. It is intentional that this does not lay out the how or the why. It creates a menu of options that we go forward with and debate as we get to each one. So I think, you know, in, in that regards, I would say step back and think about the whole document for a minute. I, I don't think we have to have the details of that because we don't do that in most other areas. We don't talk about how we're going to advocate for RTD to pay for more local service. We don't talk about how we're going to expand lane miles in, in areas that need additional roadways, right? We talk about those as tools that have to occur. So I, I think we should treat this the same way. Then why do you need that Director line? Christmas. I'm sorry. Director Chris. Then why do you need that language? It, because it's taking just, your theory, yeah. what does that language give you that leaving it alone wouldn't? Because I find it I find it confusing. But maybe I'm the only one. So hey, I'm gonna go to Director Shakti, then Director Brockett. Is this my full turn or just my responding to the <laughs> <laughs> your your response to start? And then um, I'll forget you. No, I'm <laughs> just that. How does it change it in terms of this is the constitution level, and it's saying that um, putting this language in is saying that uh, we have broad vision and goals that include working together as a region to define how we're going to grow, um, and that our it's not that our only regional goal is that each jurisdiction does whatever they want, um, which. I, I think that the language was changed to such an extent in this draft that it currently says each jurisdiction will do whatever they want, which I don't even know why you need a chapter then. And I think we've really lost something um, in that I agree, I feel fine about taking out the specific references to the UGB. But I think that the fact that we have come together as a region with a consensus process about this really important issue is something we can be really proud of and we need to work on it and fix it but we can't just be done with it that quick that we're not comfortable with that in Lakewood so. just a side comment I find it interesting this healthy discussion amongst three attorneys <laughs> <laughs> director Brockett Good. Um, well, actually, Director Shakti uh, expressed a lot of what I was going to say, um, which is I think that the language has is backed out to the point where the intent of um, of the urban growth, uh, original intent of the urban growth boundary and area has been lost. I mean, it seems to me that, that putting a label on it makes it simpler, which was Director Stoltzman's point that led off the discussion. It gives you an easy way to refer to something. And um, you could certainly um, take the original language and um, change it somewhat to make references to the fact that this is a program in flux, um, that it, there, um, it's under revision, we're going to define it in collaboration with local juris jurisdictions to meet the needs of those jurisdictions. Um, but if you had a, a label, which is a label we've been using for I don't know how many years, it does provide some convenience. I mean, I'm certainly willing to take the label away as some other um, people have described. Um, as long as we strengthen the language um, to get the intent back in, but it seems to me that um, the label of the UGBA is the simplest way to deal with this question. So real quick, uh, take a quick pause. The people in the room have a distinct advantage because I can see your hands. So right now in the queue I have uh, Director Stolzman and Director Shakti. Is there anybody on the, on the line that would like to get in the queue? Going once. Um, Bob, you know, I can't, Jackie, I can't give up my opportunity ever to speak, right? All right, so, uh, so, I'll, so I'll call your name in, in the queue. I just wanted to make sure that okay. people that were on the phone had an opportunity. So anybody else on the phone that would like to jump in? So right now in order, I have Stolzman, Shakti, and Malay. Director Stolzman. Thank you. I just wanted to point one thing out. In, in other areas, we do refer to programs. So like in Outcome 3, we talk about urban centers. We didn't have to talk about urban centers. We could have talked about areas that are planned for housing and business growth, but we just call it an urban center. And then we use that word over and over again, and there, it's in the definition section. So I, 
I, it, I do think in all of the sections we use these terms that are things that we use as tools, and I don't think that's inconsistent. And I'm glad that Director Malay is going to talk. I was going to ask her if she'd want to chime in. That through the time that I've been on the board, there was a lot of discussion to get to this point, and I thought Director Malay had a lot to contribute to get us to where we are. So thanks. Director Shockey. I took extra time in my last turn. Thank you. <laughs> Director Malay. And so I guess what my community and therefore I am struggling with is um, the unknowns associated with the urban growth boundary. I think Lone Tree is an excellent example of a community that is really looking at more dense um, development, uh, much to the chagrin of some of the residential neighborhoods within my community, but we understand as a city that that really is our future. Um, and we have planned for it to be that way, and we certainly don't need Dr. Cog's UGB slash A to tell us that or reinforce that. But when we put a label on something and then draw a boundary around it, um, we have created a problem for ourselves. And there is a development that is proposed in my community that is currently not in the UGB slash A. And I feel like if we say yes, to, we I can I am very supportive of the proposed changes by staff, understanding and recognizing there may be some wordsmithing associated with it. But I don't want to sign on to a, a, a document that's going to put me in a parochial fight with Douglas County because I'm taking away an, their UGB slash A for a development that actually really makes sense for my community and is part of my long-term plan. So to me, while my regional hat at Dr. Cog is very, very important to me, and I do believe and my community is following the practices of the concepts of UGB slash A, this development is, is now not, is outside my UGB slash A. So if we don't see some changes, I'm in a position where I cannot support this document. So I am willing to, to try and, and, and frankly, uh, during our, I was not made aware of the fact that this development was not within our UGBA area until my staff reviewed this draft. Um, so, and I can't imagine that other communities aren't in this same place. So when we've got a fixed area or a fixed boundary that's going to just create a fight with form Lone Tree with another municipality or, or the county, I'm not willing to sign on to do that. So, Director Malay, if I could ask one clarifying question. Um, yeah. I'm it, it, I, it sounded like you were at first speaking against against the individual change, but then I heard you say that your community I'm probably supportive. couldn't support this document at all. Did I hear that correctly? No, 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 no. Okay. I'm supportive of the language that staff proposed. Okay, I got you. Thank I you. I recognize that we may need to wordsmith that a little bit. But the the but but Lone Tree cannot sign on to a UGB slash A that we're already in conflict with. I mean, it just does not make sense for my community. Director Kanich. So, um, at at the risk of potentially stepping on the chair's toes, I guess what I'm curious of is I, I hear some folks who think that the simplest and easiest way to do it is to keep the UGBA in here, and and I hear some folks. Uh, saying that you know they they can't live with it at all. I, I, I feel like my language is intended to, to be a compromise and so I guess I want to just maybe ask the pointed question could both sides live with the revision I've proposed and I can list off the places it would go. It would go on page six which is a summary of this uh, same outcome. It would go on page 10 which is a summary of the same outcome. It would get tacked onto page 18, objective two. Um, uh, so there's a revision from the staff on objective two and it would get tagged on the end of that. Um, and then it would get tacked on page 19. Um, in the, uh, that one's a little trickier because it's a two-sided page, but it would go on the left-hand side on the last bullet there. And so, um, so it's the, I, I would just suggest the same clause just carries through for consistency within regionally designated growth areas. So, so I guess, I, I, you know, Mr. Chair, if, if, if I may just, if folks could maybe, it, can, can, could this 
be a compromise? <laughs> or is there a slight word change to this that's, that would be necessary to get there? But, but I, I mean, I, I think that making everyone feel thrilled in this section may not be an outcome that we can achieve. So, so. Uh, oh yeah, starting with page 15. These were the other references, right. sorry. Right. Yeah. So uh, everybody's aware of this, I'm sure, but I'll just remind the board that we do not actually take votes at this, at this table. So it would go to the full board for a vote. Uh, but I agree with Director Kanich's question as to if we could get some sort of indication whether or not people are generally comfortable with those changes or not. Um, so I don't know, uh, you know, we do a thumbs up of some sort uh, of people. So what, what we have is the, the verbiage changes that Director Kanich has recommended and quite a bit of conversation around that. So is, is that language sufficient? Are there things that maybe somebody would want to tweak a little bit more? Director Jones. Um, I would put a thumbs up. There is one other um, change that um, I would suggest that I think is more clarifying. So I think this is the sort of the crux of the changes, but I just wanted to put a placeholder. I'm generally seeing people in agreement Director Brockett. But I, I think the, the language here is good. I, I would just, I would be interested in seeing some strengthened language throughout the sections. And I, I apologize, I don't have a specific language uh, handy at the moment. But um, something ab about how Dr. Cog will be, will be working with the communities to designate areas for future growth. So I, I, I feel like the language that's, that, that's in here, even, even with this addition from Director Kanich, that doesn't go quite far enough to state that, that we will be, this is something that we're going to continue to develop as an organization to work on some future way of, of designating uh, urban growth areas, even so, if we don't call it that. So a clarifying question for my benefit, the portion that says coordinated effort between Dr. Cog and local communities, you would want something possibly stronger than well, that? And is not necessarily in the, I guess I'm, not necessarily in that outcome language, okay. but within the text. Within I guess what I'm looking for some some additional kind of clarifying language within the text that would state our intent to track this as an organization in collaboration, you know, with the the local jurisdictions. Mr. Rex. Well, um, I was wondering if it'd be possible, maybe in that in the call out box that specifically talks about the UGBA program. Um, in the second paragraph there, where we have the red line, we, we, uh, we mentioned that it hasn't been evaluated for several years. If we mentioned something there about we will be working with local communities, dot, 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 to do further advance. I think that could get it. Get something to it. There. Uh, I'll just add, there's also a regional initiative um, spelled out that kind of gets to the same point. Um, but that may be one of the ones that would be impacted by Director Kanich's um, comments to, make, to bring these four words um, into that. So although there might be a little more conversation on this particular item at the board level, it looks like we have generally people are good with this and uh, we're going to move it forward. Um, so setting that one aside, what else do we have to discuss on this? Director Jones. So in the spirit of, I think, um, Director Cernanek started it, um, talking about making sure that we're talking about, you know, what we're doing here, I would suggest on page 18, Up in the um, narrative paragraph below Regional Objective 2, in that second sentence, where it talks about um, um, achieve, right after the word achieve, so identify local urban growth pri priorities and aspirations, da 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 da, da and, and the region's ability to achieve. Shared outcomes is a pretty vague sort of ambiguous thing, so I would propose inserting the words after achieve a compact regional footprint and other shared objectives or uh, shared outcomes because I think it's really important why we're doing this is the compact regional footprint that's what's deriving the, the public benefits and I think it's important to call that out otherwise shared outcomes could be anything so did that capture it accurately director Jones Comments, questions on that particular item? 
Looks like we have general agreement on that as well. Director Cernanek. And I'm, I'm not opposed to um, what Director Jones has put out there, but I would put something up in the first paragraph of this section to say what we're trying to do is avoid the negative aspects of sprawl uh, that uh, I think we have commonality on, at least that's where I come from, and I would put that up way at the beginning of this section. Which section? In the first paragraph there on outcome two. Why, why are we even talking about this? Mr. Rex. Way back there. Uh, yeah. or, or, or even earlier on page 10. So it's more of a historical perspective as right. to the reason why we're even, yeah. Gotcha. Everybody understand and good with that? Comments, questions? Next topic. What? <laughs> Don't sell beyond the close. <laughs> I am not seeing anybody else that uh, wants to amend, change, or question. I'll give you another opportunity to make sure I haven't missed anybody. Director Jones? Um, if I could put jurisdictions on the spot who have provided comments that have caused us to so extensively edit this. Have we got your support from Metro Vision for making these changes? Because I want to reemphasize again, these edits are hard for my jurisdictions to swallow, even with the fine tuning we just did. Um, in the spirit of com uh, compromise and collaboration and passing a regional vision, I'm willing to go there, but it's with the assumption that this addresses the concerns of jurisdictions that commented. And so before I say, yep, I'm willing to sign off, I guess I need to hear that we've actually made progress on that front. So if the jurisdictions that commented could maybe give some feedback, that would be helpful. Director Holen. Uh, we're, we're fine with the ed editorial changes and the, uh, the entire uh, uh, concept presented in the Metro Vision document. Director Williams. Okay. Director Partridge. I'll first say we were probably one of the first ones to send a letter and I would first explain that because as you operate on a board, a commission, we believe in Douglas County you move as a whole. So with that, that's why in the end of, in the November, it was brought to the full Douglas County Board, and the decision was no of not support because the decision the uh, at that point it was December sixth was going to be a, a vote. With that, there's a new draft document. So with that, I have committed to say in true form, yes, I will take this back to our board. But I will make a comment regarding our comments. We did send our letter. We stated information as to why. We were not contacted by staff until after the fact where comment period was closed. That I disagree with. So our comments were not put in the red line version. So I would urge everybody to go through Douglas County's comments again, especially regarding page two, because what this document does, it does refer UGBA. It does refer to TIP. So our concern is all the way along, the verbiage in here is very urban centric which is not fit for Douglas County. I think even Mayor Millay even made that reference to that. So I think counties are at gross advantage when it comes to UGBA, and I will be interested in talking to the full Arapahoe County Board regarding this too. And the other thing, the other issue is, as this is a guiding document, a visionary document, we always have asked that question, why are there true action words involved because as you can see, this is not a policy document for any jurisdiction to take. That I agree with. This is not the master plan for Douglas County, and I don't know of anybody that uses this as their comprehensive master plan. But with that, we know historically this has been used for TIP criteria. TIP criteria has not been set. So why would you have action words, regulatory words, policy words in a document for 
a criteria on funding. That's been our comments all the way along. We disagree with that. So I can't tell you how the board's going to vote, but as I can tell you, there have been no changes that Douglas County has recommended. Director Holman. I would only add that the, the, the board is in general agreement with these changes. However, we're, we have a new board coming on uh, on the 9th of January. Oh my God. And uh, I can't speak for, they have, we've not voted on it. We can't, I can't speak for the outcome, but I think in general we're agree with it. And, and to your comments, uh, Roger, I think uh, uh, I think we still we share those concerns about the TIP uh, uh, criteria, selection criteria. So um, I will uh, uh, pull back a little bit on my comment, but I think in general we're, we're agree we're in agreement with the uh, with most of the issues here, uh, with the exception of what what you brought up. Thank you. Other comments? Okay. We beat our time by 34 minutes, which is kind of amazing to me. Uh, staff, anything? Uh, I would assume uh, that this will be something that will go to the board for consideration at your January board meeting. Yes, thank you for that uh, comment. We, this will move forward to the January 15th Obviously meeting. Obviously with the changes that were with, discussed. With the changes, yes. So, um, Director Holen has asked for a word, but I'm going to go because I, I think he wanted something at the end. So, I'll go to Director Jones and then Director Graves. I just wanted to put a fine point on the um, upcoming board meeting and where we'll vote on this. Um, we have to have a majority of all members, not a majority of those present. This is one of the most important things that Dr. Cog does and so I just want to encourage everybody to please be in attendance if for something for some reason you can't send your alternate it's important this is our regional vision and it would be great to have a, a really um, big vote on that so just wanted to underscore the fact that we need people to show up so I would only add to that that if you are not able to make it and you are sending your alternate there's a lot of material here please make sure that your alternate is up to speed uh, as much as is possible to come to the board meeting prepared. Um, Director Graves. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just a couple of notes of thanks to the staff who's really bent over backwards to accommodate the board. We've had some really rich discussion here, and I feel that we're really settling into a great area, but staff has done a wonderful job trying to be a filter for us, so thank you. And then, Mr. Chairman, you've done a heck of a job. <laughs> You really have. Can we give our chair a, a round of applause for? Thank you. Aww. Thank you, Director Graves. And and you know it's usually the people that are the closest that you miss. And Director Rakowski, I, I you had your hand up for a while. My only comment is once again, Director Graves has beat me to the punch. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Seeing nothing on this business, uh, Director Holen had asked for a period of comment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this is my last um, Dr. Cog meeting as a formal representative of the county. Uh, I, I've enjoyed the last four years here. Uh, it's been a very enlightening and very um, helpful opportunity to share con our Repo County concerns and to share a, a, a vision of uh, what the future of the Denver metro area looks like. Uh, it's been an honor. I'm going to be replaced, but I will continue to be an alternate by Jeff Baker. Jeff, could you stand? I'll make sure he's fully briefed. <laughs> Thank you very much for the opportunity to be part of this great organization. Thank you. One last opportunity for comment. And at 529, we are adjourned.
If you would, please take your name tents out with you. Thank you.